Alright, this is the video for thin film interference and this is the video that you should be doing Monday evening, I think it's the 10th of December. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and plow ahead here real quick. Uh, some of this information is a little bit tricky, but there are a couple tips that will make life a little bit easier as you move through the material and as we as I proceed through this I'll definitely kind of give you some heads up as to some things that will make uh, uh, some of the concepts a little bit easier. There's one concept that I think is a little sticky and difficult to get but you'll get it. Alright so here it is thin film interference we're gonna do a quick review this is where remember I told you to hang on to those uh, slinky worksheets this is where uh, this is where it'd be actually nice to do this video live, but the rest of this will go pretty, pretty well. Um, I'm not sure if you remember this, but remember you had a slinky, and we had the slinky here, and then we had it kind of like hooked on to another medium. So um, let's see, the wave that you sent uh, went, kind of uh, came across a barrier. And that barrier separated one medium from another medium, one kind of slinky to another kind of slinky. And uh, two things happen when it gets to a barrier. Some of this wave is going to reflect, and some of this wave is going to uh, be transmitted. And when it transmits, it'll refract. And what happens at this boundary is pretty important. And I'm going to kind of just go through those through those uh, scenarios with you real quick. So uh, here's the first one. A wave encounters a new medium. Some of that wave will bounce off. All right, and that's this part up here. And we call that reflect. Off of the new medium. And some of, um, and some of the wave will be transmitted. and that would be refracted into the new medium. All right, so we got that. So some goes in, some bounces off. Two really key important parts here. The reflected wave, the reflected wave may or may not undergo what's called a phase change. All right, so what's a phase change? Phase change is um, it's just fancy lingo for whether or not the, the wave flips. Um, what does it mean that flips? Let me go just go down here real quick and just kind of show that. So I'm going to put like a maybe a wall, like a solid barrier. Almost think of like uh, the slinky examples. Think of you holding this slinky really tight over here and not moving your arm. If I have a wave that uh, maybe is on the, on the top on up here and it travels and it hits your hand, because your hand is rigid. When the wave bounces off, that's the reflected wave, it'll come back on the other side. This flip-flop from top to bottom, we call that a phase shift. And specifically, it's 180 degrees. It's a 180 degree phase shift. So if the new medium has a greater index of refraction, or if it's more rigid, the way the reflected wave will undergo a phase change putting the reflected wave out of phase with the incline which means it flips upside down that oh, no, no, let me take this one step further as this guy goes over here and he gets to this point right here this wave since he's on top and this wave since he's on bottom at that moment will cancel each other out that's really important later on so if you have a phase shift you'll have you'll have destructive interference. That that kind of those two kind of go together. All right. Here's the next part. If the new medium has a lower index of refraction, let's just, so let's go back over here. So let's say that you didn't hold this in. You just kind of the slinky was just just laying there and uh, just kind of uh, nobody's pulling on it and you grab one side and you send a, a pulse down. <coughs> When that wave gets to the end over here, since there's nothing holding and it's not rigid, um, when it comes back, when it reflects back, it won't undergo a phase change. It'll come back on the same side. And when those two meet in the middle, they'll get 
the produce a really high wave. And actually, if you remember, I, we, uh, that's what actually happened with, uh, with the slinkies. This is no, no phase change, and this generally implies constructive. constructive interference. Okay, so what does that mean? If the new wave, new medium of a lower index of refraction, let's see, if the new medium has a lower lower index, that means it's a little bit more loose, and we'll talk about, you know, this is actually, this phrase might be might maybe more applied to light, but I'm using a slinky, but they're both waves, and so it's pretty analogous. The reflective wave will not undergo a phase change. Okay. So when a wave undergoes refraction, so now let's see here. What do we do? We, what do we do here? All right. So we we but we were talking about the reflected. So I'll, I'll put reflected here. Reflected. Now we're going to talk about the refracted. That's this part up here, and this is an easy one because it's the same every time. When a wave undergoes refraction, it does not undergo a phase change. So. Uh, Transmitted waves uh, never undergo ref uh, a phase change. Only the ones that bounce off. And you saw that, hopefully, remember it, uh, when we did the slinky. All right, so here's example number seven. This is just uh, as it goes with the diagram that uh, I gave you earlier. I think these are the revised sheets, if you remember that. So letter A, represented below are four sets of layers with the index of refraction given for each layer. In which, each of the, in, which, in which each of the following cases with the light entering the boundary indicate change of phase upon reflection. Remember, the ones that get transmitted won't undergo any, ref, any uh, phase change. So let's just check it out here real quick. So we're looking for basically this medium. And I'm going to kind of zoom in here a little bit. So here we go. So on this one, you're going from 1.6 to 1.5. That means this medium is... <clears throat> has a smaller index of refraction, which means it's a little bit looser than this one. That means when it reflects, there will be no phase change. No phase change on this one. So if you have a trough com or a crest coming in, the crest will come out like this. Okay, so it comes in like this and it comes out like this, and there's no change. All right, let's go to the next one. You went from 1.4 to 1.5. This is a higher index of refraction, which means it's more stiff. It's more rigid, you could say. And so when it bounces off, it'll undergo a phase change. So this one is a phase change. And so if we have a crest on this one, uh, it'll come back on the other side. And this guy and this guy, if they were to meet, would cancel each other out. And uh, this one, 1.5 to 1.6, so that's a, that's a phase change. We're not really concerned about this. I think that's what, kind of when I first saw this diagram, it kind of, can, kind of threw me off. We don't really need to worry about those. And then the last one, 1.4 to 1.6, that'll be a phase change. Because this one's greater. So the only one that doesn't undergo a phase change is the first one. All right, I think you get the idea. Let's we'll see if we can use that. Uh, in this example down below. Here it is. <clears throat> All right, this one's a little dicey, so you got to hang in here with me. This is where it gets a little sticky, especially when we got to derive two formulas. All right, in the diagram below, the incoming ray will reflect off of the soap bubble and refract into the soap bubble, bounce off the air, back through the soap bubble, and refract back into the air. What in the world does all that mean? All right, so here's the ray of light that comes in. All right, so here's the ray of light that comes in. All right, when it hits and comes off this way, see if I get a sharper pencil, this is reflected. This part right here is refracted. This is reflected. And this is refracted. So we have one reflection, one refraction, another reflection, and then another refraction. I'm going to erase some of this because it's going to get kind of messy here if I'm not careful. All right. So here it is. And uh, let's see here. What are the indexes of refraction? We have 
this one's this one's one. This one's greater than one. This one's less than one. So it's almost like a soap bubble here. Yeah, I lost my lost my my thing here. All right, there it is. All right, so let's read this initial question and see if we can kind of start working through these. When the incoming re wave ray reflects off the soap bubble, will it undergo a phase change? So let's go over here. So when it reflects off, will it undergo a phase change? Well, it's going from 1 to a medium that has a greater index of refraction. Remember, if it has a greater index of refraction, it's more rigid, and that's a yes. So this one is a phase change. I'm going to put phase change right here. That one underwent a phase change, and that's going to be really important later on because phase changes indicate um, indicate uh, destructive interference. All right. When the incoming ray refracts into the soap bubble, will it undergo a phase change upon refraction? The answer is no. Anytime it refracts, there's no phase change. So that's just an easy, quick answer. The incoming ray eventually reflects off of the air. Will it undergo a phase change? So what does that mean? So when this guy, when the ref when this guy, when the incoming ray, when this one reflects off of this part, will it undergo a phase change? And to answer that question, you have to look at the two indices of refraction. It's going from one that's greater to one that's less. So that means it's less rigid. So it will not undergo a phase change. So this one is a no. All right, the next one. When the incoming ray refracts back into the air, will it undergo a phase change? And the answer, quick answer on that one is no. Uh, and that's because it refracts. Anytime it refracts is a no. So I only had one, one time. Okay, so here's the next one. And this is where it gets a little more fun. If ray one and ray two are shifted by a full wavelength, the result will produce constructive, I'm sorry, destructive interference. So let me put that down here real quick. Destructive. destructive interference. So let's see if I can kind of draw a quick diagram so you kind of get the idea here. I'm going to actually draw two of them. So I'm going to have a wave that comes down and then reflects. And I've kind of drawn this one earlier. So you've got a wave here, crest. And if this is more rigid, so we'll say this is n equals 1, this is n greater than 1, it'll bounce off. And then this guy cancels this guy out. Now, it's a little bit trickier when this wave hits. Yeah, some of it's going to bounce off. I'm going to ignore that part right now. So just ignore the, the reflected part. When it, uh, it goes in, there's no phase change here because this is refraction. So no phase change here. When it reflects off, there's no phase change here because this is n is greater than 1. This is n equals 1. So there's no phase change there. And there's no phase change here. So there's a phase change for the reflected. Refa phase change for the reflected. And no phase change for the refracted the secondary one that comes out. All right, so now let's think about this. If this film right here, the thickness of this film is a half wavelength down and a half wavelength up, when a crest gets here, then a crest will get here. I'm not sure if that makes a whole lot of sense. Let's try that one more time. So when you get a crest that comes in, if this is a half wavelength down and a half wavelength back, that's a full wavelength, then down and back, when a crest gets here, when a crest, when a crest comes in, the crest goes down, it comes back, when that crest returns, there will be a brand new crest coming in. I think that makes better sense. Let's try that one more time. So as a crest comes in, it goes in, it bounces off, it comes back. When that crest comes back, if we have another one coming in at the at the same moment, that'll be that'll be destructive, and that only happens when this path length right here, the down and back, when that path length, that t, is equal to one 
full wavelength. We're going to say thickness here. Well, let's, let's not call it thickness yet. Um, let's call it L for length. When this length all right, is equal to one full wavelength, we get destructive interference. Okay, now, it's not always that simple. <laughs> if you were thinking that was that simple, sometimes that wave can come at an angle. And then you'll have a reflected. And then you'll have one that's, uh, let's see, a refracted one. And then it'll bounce off and then come back this way. All right, so let's say I get a crest that comes in. That crest comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down. If I get a crest coming out, the moment that this crest, when the next crest comes out, if I have a crest coming out and a crest coming out here, because this has this was reflected and this went a phase change and this had no phase change, this crest and this crest will cancel out and I will have destructive interference. I'll say it one more time so you kind of follow it. Here it is. I have crest number one coming in. It goes in, it comes out, okay, and then is refracted. If the moment that it comes out, another crest comes in and reflects, because this one underwent a phase change and this one never did undergo a phase change, they'll have destructive interference. But this only happens when this path length, we'll call it L, is equal to one wavelength. Has to be equal to a wavelength. That's really important. So let's see if we can think about it in terms of deriving a formula to determine the thickness of the, of the thing. Well, what we need is this. We need this length right here to equal a full wavelength. Well, the problem is we're going to call this T. That means L, which is going to really be T down and T up, is really equal to 2W. Two, is equal to 2T. So I'm going to try that, try that again. So L is equal to, this is for destructive, one wavelength. L, though, is really equal to 2 times T for thickness. That's a horrible letter to choose, but that's what we've chosen. So then we can say that T then will equal... 2t will equals one wavelength. And then if we solve for thickness, thickness equals then wavelength over two. And so when the wavelength, or when the thickness is equal to a half a wavelength, we'll have destructive interference. Whew. All right. Let's see if we can think this through the next on the next one. If ray 1 and ray 2 are shifted by any multiple of a half a wavelength, the result will produce constructive interference. All right, so let's think this through. Go back over here. All right, so I have a wavelength that comes in. Some of that does reflect. All right, I'm not too concerned about that one right now, but some of it does reflect. And then let's say I have a medium here. So the, ref the, the ref part of that wave gets reflected. That's coming back. And part of that wave gets refracted, comes off, and bounces off. Now, if, let's see, we know, we know the reflected one's going to undergo a phase change. But if I have this one coming in, th at the same time I have a, if I, let's, see, let's, try, let's try it one more time. So I have a crest coming in. I know I'm driving you crazy. I have a crest coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, and I have a crest coming out. If I have a crest come in, the next one comes in, and then I have a crest coming out, but that crest is not is flipped. If this is equal to, uh, I said that wrong, and I'm driving you guys crazy. Try it one more time. Crest comes in comes down here, comes back here, and I have a crest that comes out. But I, it's timed so that the next trough comes back. Now you think, okay, if there's a trough that's going to reflect and that, comes, that corresponds to a crest that comes all the way through, that they would undergo destructive interference. But remember that this guy right here undergoes a phase shift. So he switches from a trough to a crest and when he switches from a cross to a trough, from a trough to a crest, we have constructive interference, and then we'll have.
bam, right there. Let's try that one more time. See if I can say it better and maybe with a clear diagram and then we'll move on. All right, so wave comes in. I'm going to track a crest. A crest comes down, comes back up. So I have a crest. So I have a crest that comes out right here. Boom. If at the same time I have a trough that was reflected, you would think, oh, when a trough and a crest intersect, that's going to be destructive interference, but it's not because this this trough will undergo phase shift. So the trough will become a crest, and I'll have two crests going out at the same time, and that would be constructive interference. And that only occurs when it's shifted by a half a wavelength. All right, so what does that mean? All right, so here it is. We're going to derive a formula. So when the length, this down and back business, when the length is equal to one half of a wavelength, I get constructive interference. So that means that's two times the thickness. Let's see if we can think that through. So then the thickness. two times the thickness is equal to one half lambda and then I can get thickness is equal to lambda over four. So if the thickness is equal to one fourth of a wavelength, I'm in business. All right, if I haven't thoroughly confused you, let's see if we can apply this example to example number eight. Um, if you can just remember the equations and use the equations, you'll be fine. Shouldn't be a big deal, but if you can understand the the underpinnings of the equation, that would be even better. So here it is. Determine the minimum thickness of plastic with an index of refraction of 1.4 that could be placed on a water surface, 1.33, to reflect green light of wavelength 500 nanometers. All right, let's see what's actually going on here. All right, so I have weight, I have light coming in. And when it goes in, it's going to go from air. We know that air is equal to 1. Plastic, they just told me. And plastic is going to be equal 1.4. And then I have this water business. So I have a piece of plastic sitting on top of water. And that's going to be 1.33. So let's see what happens here. Uh, when it goes in, it's going to reflect bend towards the normal. And at the same time, I'll have one bounce off. Now let's just check this out. I'm going from a low to a high, so this means a phase change. I'll just do a delta there to show a change. All right, this guy's going to bounce off of this guy and come back and come out. Now, when he goes from 1.4 to 1.3, that's less. There's no phase change and no phase change here when it refracts. So the only one that underwent a phase change is this guy. All right, so here it is. Calculate the wavelength of the green light in the plastic. Remember, when waves refract into new mediums, only the frequency remains the same. So the frequency here and the frequency here are the same. The speed, and we talked about this earlier in the chapter, and the wavelength of the refracted wave changes. All right, so what we first need to do is this. We need to calculate the wavelength of the light in our new medium, in plastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at uh, some of the tools that I have and some of the equations that we've kind of worked with. This is going to be a great review for us. So I'm going to start with the index of refraction equation. And I know it's n, it's equal to, it's n equals c over lambda. This would be the, um, I wrote that wrong. This is the speed in a vacuum. This is the speed in the medium. I'll put a V and an M there. I also know that V equals lambda F. And so I'm going to use this and substitute that into both of these. So I can say N is equal to um, wavelength in a vacuum, frequency in a vacuum, wavelength in the medium, and frequency in the medium. Now, what did we say earlier? We know that the frequency doesn't change. Well, the frequency here and the frequency here are the same they cancel out. So then I get a new equation. I get n is equal to the wavelength in the vacuum divided by the wavelength in the medium. 
All right. Let's see what happens now. So we get. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. We want the wavelength in the medium. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this for the wavelength in the medium. So wavelength in the medium is equal to wavelength in the vacuum divided by n. It's a horrible looking n. What's the wavelength in the vacuum? They told us it was 500 nanometers. 500. Divided by n, and that's the, let's see, that's the plastic, so that's 1.4. And if I divide those out, I get 357 nanometers. Okay, so that's a wavelength in that particular uh, medium in plastic. All right, now the next question asks us, calculate the thickness of the plastic film to reflect green light. Reflect means or implies constructive interference. All right, so if we go back and grab the equation earlier, constructive interference occurs when the thickness is equal to one-fourth of the wavelength. So the wavelength then is going to be 3, 5, 7 nanometers over 4 and it'll be 89 nanometers. So if that plastic is 89 nanometers thick, that green light that comes out will undergo constructive interference, and if it undergoes constructive interference, then uh, we'll get kind of a brighter green light. Okay, the next one, thickness of the plastic to cancel it out. Well, cancel out implies destructive. And so thickness is equal to Lambda over 2, that's 357 nanometers, divided by 2, and that gives us 178 nanometers. So if I have 178 nanometers, uh, if the thickness of the plastic is 178 nanometers, I'll have destructive interference, and I won't see any green light. If it's perfect, I won't see any green light. There's our uh, notes. Hang in there if you got questions, which I'm, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of questions. We'll take them when we come back. Have a great night.